Hey everyone, this is the Mana Source. My name is Wedge, and welcome to another subscriber giveaway video. Woo, yay! So, if you haven't seen this series before, what we do is we take nine packs of whatever I want, open them up, and give away everything to viewers. And by viewers, I mean people who subscribe and then comment. That's all you have to do to win uh, is subscribe and comment. How this works is I will open nine packs, the rest of this Theros box and I will split them up into three piles. Now, I try to keep the values even as I can. Um, sometimes it's not easy, but I try. And then what happens is three random people who are subscribers who comment below will win those cards. That's all you have to do, no tricks. And if you win, you'll find out on the next week's video at the end of that video. And all you have to do if you win is just send me your address uh, on YouTube, that's it, and you're good. So uh, we're gonna get right into it. Hopefully we'll get something really awesome for the, you know, the end of this box. Give away some, we got some cool stuff in here, like we got a, I think a Nylia Master of Waves Perforos. It's gone, uh, it's gone pretty well so far. Let's see what we got. Let's go pretty quick through these. Time to feed's great. Alright, on commons we have Anvil Rot Raptor. Not bad. Dauntless Onslaught, Witch's Eye, and a Daxus of Miletus. Oh, and a Foil Abhorrent Overlord. That's pretty. I like Foil Rares. Foil Rares are cool. Alright, so Daxus of Miletus is a 3 mana 2-2, two -two, and he can't be blocked by creatures of power 3 or greater. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of that player's library, you gain life equal to the cards converted to mana cost, until end of turn you can cast it and spend any color you want. So the effect is kind of like Psychic Intrusion, kind of. Uh, not the same, but it's got like the same kind of qualifier. And then Aberrant Overlord, if you guys haven't seen this guy yet, he's kind of ridiculous, and he was from the... Uh, he was good for pre-release because you got him in your... Uh, Blackpool, and uh, he's a flying 6-6 six, six for 7 mana, uh, and when he enters the battlefield, you put a number of 1-1 one, one black harpy creatures onto the battlefield equal to your devotion to black, and um, in the pre-release, it was just great. Um, it was really, really strong. I mean, in the beginning of FPV, you do have the sack of creature, but you're probably putting like 5 or 6 harpies into play, so, alright, so pack 1, looks like we have our foil rare, so this will be pile 1 right over here on camera. Okay, whoop. Don't slip. Alright. Yeah, Daxus is in like... I see people getting Daxus a lot. I don't dislike the card either. I think he just he doesn't have like, um... very good protection. Cryptide's great. Commune's great. Hopeful Eidolon's great. <laughs> and commons we have Hunt the Hunter, Keepsake Gorgon, Witch's Eye, and a Biden of Thassa. Okay. So Biden of Thassa is two colorless, two blue for a legendary enchantment artifact. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you can draw a card. And for two mana, you can tap any creatures your opponent's control attack this turn if able. There's usually like one or two of these in mono blue devotion decks just because two blue devotion is pretty good. Like the ability is not bad. Um, well, I, neither of the abilities are bad, especially the whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player. That's pretty great when you have like master wave tokens. But this enables Devotion really, really well. So this is not a bad card uh, by any means. So we're going to stick that in pile two. All right. Let's keep going. Uh, okay. Let's see here. What we got? What we got? Voyage Zen's awesome. Chrome Crusader's awesome. Wingsteed Rider is amazing. This card's so underrated. All right. See, so for Uncommons, we have Ordeal of Erebos. Horizon Chimera, is Horizon Chimera is awesome. Flamecast Wheel, and a Hero's Downfall, nice. So Hero's Downfall is the three mana instant. Uh, destroy target creature, Planeswalker. It, it's very simple, what it does is simple, it's easy to cast, and that's why it's like $15 right now. This is an expensive card. Um, so I'm, I'm glad we pulled these, because I've been wanting to give people this card. This card's just great. Um, we'll stick it in pile three. I can move these piles around as I choose, uh, based on, you know, value. Because so I'm trying to keep everything even. Like, now that Hero's Downfall's in that pile, I probably won't put anything else big in there. Unless we just start pulling, like, crazy stuff. Prussian Chimera's awesome. Voyage's End's still good. That's, wow. Look at that, just blue cards. Um, it's really good. Okay, on commons we have Rescue from the Underworld. Dark Betrayal, Seder Piper, and a Hammer of Perforos. Alright, so we had the Biden, and now we have a Hammer. So the Hammer is one colorless and two red. Creatures you control have haste, and you can pay two colorless and a red and tap it and sack a land 
to put a 3-3 colorless golem and shaman artifact creature token onto the battlefield. I've seen this card in, like, like there's a mono-red devotion deck, because Fanatic Amogus is really strong. And I've seen this as, like, a one-of in those decks. Um, I can understand it being decent late game, because you don't... Red, like, mono-red devotion, or, like, even burn, they don't really need their lands late game all that much, because if there's something in their hand, they're just going to be casting it, like, all day, right, for days. Um, so... I can understand this how this card could be good. Uh, so I'm actually I'm gonna put it with the Biden. That'd be cool if we get little uh, just <laughs> weapon synergy. Just a bunch of different weapons. There you go. Uh, I love when packs start out with Omen Speaker. Ah, uh, it's my girl. All right. Oh man, Gray Merchant first pick. Divine Verdict. What? Okay, these first four cards are all some of the best commons. Wow. Wow. I mean, for a draft, at least. Vaporkin's great. Titan Strength is good. Baleful Eidolon's awesome. Jeez. All right. On commons, we have Ordeal of Erebos, Cutthroat Maneuver, Seder Piper, and a Fabled Hero. I think this card's underrated. It's three mana for a 2-2 two -two double strike, and when and it has Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets him, you put a 1-1 one -one counter on him. So the Heroic is pretty normal, but he's a double strike. Double strike is crazy. Every time you put a 1-1 one -one counter, you're basically putting two. Like, it's just, it's so strong. Um, I really don't think this guy is utilized as much as he should be. Uh, but I, I like him a lot. Um, where do I even put him? I guess just put him in pile one for now. I don't know why, but... I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. Again, subject to change. Because I change my mind pretty often, so... Let's see what we got. Faricus Cure is awesome. Rage of Perforos is great. All the things I'm saying are good are great for limited. Peak Eruption is our first in common. We have Glare of Heresy, Sea Lock Monster, and a Titan of Eternal Fire, and a full Scholar of Ath Athreos. That's pretty. Little foils. So Titan of Eternal Fire is six mana for a five six, and each human creature you control has pay one red and tap it to deal one damage to our creature player. So it becomes a Prodigal Sorcerer. It's okay. Um, probably not constructed playable just because it's really expensive for not being able to protect itself. But I could see this in limited. There are um, some people I know. Who used it? And it's not awful there, uh, but I don't think very very good for constructed. Um, we're gonna stick this with the hero's downfall since you know Titan of Eternal Fire is not fifteen dollars. All right, let's move right along. Ah, Nessie and Asp, definitely really underrated and limited. Super of Hemlock, awesome. Vaporkin, great. Ah, oh, Horsefish. <laughs> oh, I'm so easily entertained. Voyaging Seder is probably one of the first. It's one of the first times I've ever seen a common mana producer go first pick so much. Like, Voyaging Seder is getting first picked a lot. It's crazy. For Uncommons, we have Chronicler of Heroes, Artisan Sorrow, Warrior's Lesson, and another Psychic Intrusion. Man, okay, so I think we just had one of these last week. Um, it's five mana and target opponent. Okay, I'm, I'm going to basically spark know this. They reveal their hand. You make them discard a card. Oh no, okay. They reveal the hand, you choose a non-land card, yeah, from the graveyard or hand, and then and then exile it, and then you can cast it, but pay any colors of mana you want to do it. Is basically as long as it remains exiled, is basically what it does. Um the ability is cool, but it's it's really expensive. That's why like five mana is on a sorcery is uh so expensive. Um and I, I think that's probably why it's not played more. So I'm gonna stick this with the hero's downfall. Because Hero's Downfall makes everything else look better. <laughs> so now, if Hero's Downfall wasn't there, would you really be excited about winning a Titan of Eternal Fire and a Psychic Intrusion? I don't, I don't think so. I don't think you would be. They're so good. But see, now, because there's Hero's Downfall, everything is great again. Everything's great. Scourge Mark's fine. Chimera, eh. Rage is great. Alright, on comments, we have Anvaral Raptor, Warrior's Lesson, Fair Eco's Mender, and a Pelucranos. Awesome. So we have, I think it's our fourth mythic? So Pelucranos is two colorless, two green for a 5-5. Five, five. Then he has an XX, <laughs> XX green, monstrosity X. And whenever he becomes monstrous, he does X damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures your opponents control. Each of those creatures deals damage equal to its power to Pelucranos. So basically he just makes enemies of all your opponent's creatures and they just have a brawl. Um, I think he's good. Like, he's in the, he's in Mono Green Devotion. He's in any Red Green Beat deck because he's great for a top of a curve. Like, if you can land him, untap, and then Monstrous him, 
he's, oh my god, he's, he's just so devastating to the board. Just so devastating. Um, man, where to put him? I guess in pile mm, one, uh, I'm gonna put him in pile one, but I might change that. I'm hoping to get another god type thing in this pack so I can just put in pile three and everything can be pretty. But that almost never works out. Lightning Strike, great. Dying Verdict's still good. Trevor's Amulet, fine. Uh, Alright, on commons, we have our deal of Perforos, Spellheart Chimera, Evangel of Heliod, and an Agent of Fates. Or Agent of the Fates. Agent of the Fates is a 3 mana 3 2 with Death Touch, and whenever you cast spell that targets him, each opponent sacks a creature. I like this card. Um, it's not in Constructed, or like, it's not really in the Mono Black Devotion deck that much, but. It's just, you know what it is? It's hard because black doesn't have a lot of good heroic enablers that don't like have either big drawbacks or don't fill necessary spots that you have to use for other things. Um, if Agent of the Fates, if like the ability was in a different color, or like if the creature was in a different color, granted it wouldn't have the stack ability probably, but it could be good. I'm not saying it's not good. I just, I get why it's not being played that much. Um, and that's, that makes me sad. Uh, cause it probably should be. Um, hmm. I, uh, man, this is tough. I guess I'll put it in the middle pile. Um, this seems okay. Uh, obviously not great. The Hero's Downfall kind of skews everything. Um, if Eborn Overlord was a more crazy foil rare, I might switch Pelucranos around, but I, I think it's, I think it's okay. Um, yeah, I think, I think it's okay. So, all right, so remember, this is pile one, pile two, pile three. All you have to do to win is be a subscriber and then comment below, that is it. And then at the end of next week's video, you can see if you won any of these piles, then all you have to do is send me your address on YouTube. You get the rares, any foils, any tokens, and any uncommons. I don't send commons because I don't want to buy bigger envelopes. So remember, that's all you have to do, piles one, two, three, good luck. Thanks for watching. I'm Wedge. See you next time.